Good morning, family. Morning, CFC Brakpan. Amen. Make me all just greet our Facebook family. Good morning, Facebook friends and family. Hallelujah. Family, can we just turn around as we are in church? Can we just do this confession with me, please? You on Facebook, don't turn around. You can watch the screen. Thank you. Say this with me. The Word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. It separates the things of the flesh and the spirit. Therefore, I decree, I shall not leave the same way I entered. I will be made free by the truth as I apply the truth. I cancel the lie of the enemy as I speak the truth over every situation. Therefore, I say, I have continual uncommon favor, supernatural breakthrough, divine health, wealth, and prosperity, effective open doors, undeniable miracles, supernatural provision, spiritual transformation, and divine alignment. I'm breaking new ground, sowing greater seeds for a greater harvest. This is my time for new hope, new wine skin, and new wine. All my good seeds I have sown is producing a mighty harvest. I'm putting in the sickle because this is harvest time. I am the redeemed of the Lord and I say so. Satan is under my feet and that is where he'll remain. If God is for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah! Family, you may be seated. We have some announcements. Church news. As you all can see, there's lots of stuff happening at Christian Family Church Brackman. Do we have any first-timers at Christian Family Church Brackman today? Would you please raise your hands? Do we have any first-timers on Facebook? Can you please just put your name in the comments so we can get connected to you? And we have a first-time video for your first-timers. Thank you. Welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. One of the ways we express this love is through worship because our God is truly amazing. He created everything, great and small, and His love for us is incredible, powerful, and completely unconditional. We also spend time looking into His Word, the Bible, and receive practical teaching to guide us along His path in our everyday lives. But it doesn't end when the service is over. Throughout the week, we gather in groups to serve, pray, reach out to our community, and sometimes just to hang out and have fun. Life is full of challenges, and none of us are perfect. But we believe that's one of the reasons God has brought us together. We're all here to help and support each other through each step of life's journey, because nobody should have to travel alone. So thanks for joining us today. No matter who you are, we want you to know you are welcome. Amen. You are welcome. Family, let's close our eyes and commit the service unto the Lord. God, we come to you in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We worship you, praise you, honor you, and surrender to you, Lord. 
Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for this day that you have made, Lord, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we pray a blessing over the service today, Lord. We pray that your word will go forth accurately and correctly, Lord, and I pray that you bind the words out of my mouth if it's not from you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I totally surrender and submit to you, Lord. I give you all the glory, honor, and praise for this word. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, amen. Family, my message title for this morning is Restore Us. As you've seen the advert, it was this old rusty car. Today we are all old rusty cars. Just imagine this, a big yard full of old rusty cars. When we walk through that yard, or some of us walk through that yard, all we see is rust, dust, old, broken, good for nothing. When the owner of that shop or that garage walks through that garage or through that yard, he sees potential, he sees the end product, and he sees the profit. So as we walk through our neighborhood and we see the dust, we see the rust, we see the dirty, the bruised, the broken, the busted, the disgusted, what do we think? When Jesus walks through our neighborhood, he sees people in their restored and revived state, shiny, looking new. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever said, if someone asks you to do something, for example, if someone asked me today, Eddie, would you service my vehicle? I would say, I have to go to a manual to do that because I'm a bit rusted. <laughs> so all of us are a bit rusted in something. You need to be revived so that something new can be birthed. We all have been that old rusty car. Family, God has identified you today to be restored. And I need you to say this after me. Revive this old rusty car. Amen. Family, God starts by checking for damages He's identified you now. Now he's checking for damages. He's checking the wiring. Is there something he needs to remove? He then he wants to strip the vehicle completely and did then strip all layers of paint. By checking for damages, Jesus is checking, but he, does not, he, does, he doesn't check to say that you are unrepairable. He's just checking to see how much love, tender, and care you need. When he checks the reason why you are standing, why are you rusted, why are your tires flat, why are you stagnant, why are you standing still, he identifies selfishness, pride, rebellion, harmful actions and words, anger, greed, lust, misunderstandings, assumptions, past trauma, or unhealthy thoughts. And all of this must be acknowledged by each one of us and addressed. God checks the wiring and He removes some wiring to change our mindsets. Then He strips up, He strips the body completely, removing all panels. For example, baggages, bitterness, depression, suicidal thoughts, lust, perversion, confusion, and so on. All the negative stuffs. Then he strips all the layers of paint, breaking down those walls around us. Do you remember Forrest Gump? He says, onions. I, <laughs> onions has got layers. Onions. Onions has got layers. And Shrek said it. The donkey said, onions has got layers. So family, so we also have got layers. Then the restoration needs to start. The damage needs to be repaired. Rewiring needs to take place. Then the undercoat needs to be put on. Then the spray paint needs to be done. And then we have to replace all the parts, all the new parts or restored parts. How do you revive yourself and others as Christian? We do that through God's word. Let's repair the damage. God reveals the reality through his word to be believed by faith. As we all know the scripture, Hebrews 11 verse 1, 
King James Version says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is how you start repairing your damage. You start building up your faith. Then we need to be rewired. God had needs to remove everything out of us that's not of Him, and then He needs to replace peace. The peace of Christ rule in our hearts when His Word dwells richly in us. Colossians 3, verse 15 to 16, King James Version said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you shall call in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly, dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. See, family, this rewiring, God's word needs to dwell in you, family, richly. So peace needs to replace everything inside of you. Then we go to the undercoat and the spray paint. God gives himself to us, family. Romans 8 verse 9 says as a passion translation, but when the spirit that's inside of us, the undercoat of Christ, empowers your life, you are not dominated by the upper coat, the flesh, but by the spirit, the undercoat. If you are not joined by the spirit of the anointed one, you are not of him. 2 Peter 1 verse 4 says, Through there has been, there has been given us his very great and precious promise, so that through them you may participate, or oh, sorry, yes, I was right, participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Then God needs to replace the parts. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, New International Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation, the new part, you see, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here, God has given us His own emotion, a given and governing spirit to produce fruit. That is pleasing to God. Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23. And we all know this one. New International Version says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, this forbearance, this means patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. God replaces hatred with love. God replaces despair with joy. God replaces turmoil with peace. God replaces anger with patience. God replaces severity with kindness. God replaces badness with goodness. God replaces unfaithfulness with faithfulness. God replaces harshness with gentleness. And God replaces passions control with self-control. He addresses our emotional lives at the source. It's our heart's family. God surrounds us with His people. Can you see His people around us? Sanctification is a community project. The matured Christians, we teach to baby Christians. And we all serve one another with our different variety of gifts. We all hear the word. We live life together and build each other up by speaking the truth in love. Ephesians 5, 4 verse 15 says, Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is in the head. <laughs> yeah, who? Sorry. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every word into Him who is the head into Christ. Family, emotional, healthy emotional status are found in healthy emotional lives, found in the blood-brought community of the redeemed 
you and me. Family, now we have seen how a rusty old car can be restored. Now let God restore our lost years. God restore our lost years. Take note, family. There is hope because God can restore the lost locust years. And here is how he's doing it. Family, I want you guys to make notes. Write down this. Go and read Joel 1 to 3 at your own time at home. And then you can see there for yourself how God can restore you, not like where you were before, but better than ever. In Joel 1 to 3, I'm just going to give you a short description of this. Destruction came by locusts. Everything was destroyed, family. Then the nation was called repentance. After they repented, God restored them. After he restored, the, the, the stored, <laughs> restored them, he poured out his spirit upon them, gave, giving them visions and dreams. Then God judges their enemies, and then God blesses his people. God can restore lost years by deepening your communion with him. Joel, 7, Joel 2 verse 27 you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and there is no one else. Family, these people have endured so much. Have we endured much, family? But they, but they enjoyed the communion with the Lord that is far greater than anything they had ever known before in their religious lives. Christ can restore the lost years by deepening your fellowship with Him. Let's ask God. Say this. Repeat after me. Lord, I have spent too many years without You. Too many years at a distance from You. Lord, fill my heart with Your love and gratitude for Christ. Let the loss of these years make my love for you greater than ever before. Say this, Lord, restore to me the years the locusts have eaten. Amen. Thank you, family. Woo! Family, God can restore lost years by multiplying your fruitfulness. The harvest of these people that is mentioned in Joel 1 to 3 have been wiped up completely for years. But God restored the years that the locusts have eaten by giving them a bumper harvest. Who wants a bumper harvest? Amen. Isn't it time? The provision here makes us think about the parable where Jesus spoke about a harvest that could be 30, 60, or 100 percent, a hundredfold. There is a huge different family between these three harvests. Think about this. Three years at hundredfold is lots of fruit. If you want the same years and you only get 30, 30 fold, you need to have a decade of blessings. Understand? So it's better to go the 100 percent for, for three years than a decade in 30-fold. Say this, family. Lord, the locusts have eaten too much years of our lives. You called us, your disciples, to bear much fruit that will last. Too many fruitless years have passed. Now, Lord, we ask you to give us some years now in which more lasting fruit will be produced than in all of our years of the small harvest. Amen. I mean, this is all these small harvests, all these just getting by every month. Why don't we just, now we break this curse and God's going to give us this, this bumper harvest. Why do, do we need to work from from 
hand to mouth. We go, said, from hand to mouth. We just get enough to feed ourselves. The small old jobs come, come, coming in. Let God give us a bumper harvest. We will no longer just have enough. We will have more enough blessed to be a blessing. Family, God can restore lost years by bringing long-term gain from short-term loss. I will explain this in 1 Peter 1 verse 7. Listen to this. Was this, is this you? These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Have some of you been through trials lately? It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor unto the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Amen. Your rewards in heaven, family. We often think about the years the locusts have eaten. Don't we? Years that have been taken from us and lost. But think about this. The Lord Jesus Christ, at the prime of his life, three years in his ministry, at the age of 33, you would think that a man launching a new enterprise at the age of 33 has everything in front of him. But Isaiah says, he was cut off. He was cut off because he came under the judgment of God, not for his own sins, because he had none but for ours. Family, God is the only one that can say, I will restore the years the locusts have eaten. Family, as we all can see, that the gospel is the only answer for restoration. Jesus brings new life to our identity, a new coat of paint. Apart from God, our mistakes make us who we were and then separates us from God. But because of Jesus, people who were once far off, God, far, far off from God, are able to draw near. We have a place to belong and people we are connected to. Our new identity is that of a child of God. We have a good father, and he looks out for us. Amen. Jesus brings new life to our desires. Apart from Jesus... We live in selfishness, we live in pride, rebellion, harmful actions and words, anger, greed, and lust, and more and more. Through desires, eventually, that leads to death and destruction. When Jesus brings us life, He brings expectation. We experience peace, gratitude, fulfillment, and hope. We want what God wants, and we want, and we don't want what we deserve. Let me repeat that. We want what God wants, not what we think we deserve. Jesus brings new life into our relationships. Hallelujah. Family, because we are alive in Christ and love Jesus, do we love Jesus? Amen. Amen. It gives us the ability to love others. We can't love other people well if we've never experienced love ourselves. Being loved by God teaches us how to love others. Jesus brings new life to our priorities. When we live in spiritual darkness, the only people we look out for is ourselves. We may put our money, our jobs, our family, or something else before God. But even good things become bad things when you try to make them more important than God. 
The gospel means that Jesus came into our lives, then he rearranges our priorities so it can match his. Jesus alone can move us from death to life. He conquered death by his sacrifice on the cross. 1 Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, verse 9 to 11, Good News Translation. It must be remembered, of course, that the laws are made not for good people, but for lawbreakers and criminals, for the godless and sinful, for those who are for those who are not religious or spiritual, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the immoral, for sexual perverts, for kidnappers, for those who lie and give false testimony, or who do anything else contrary to the sound doctrine. That teaches... Well, that teaching is found in the gospel that was entrusted to me to announce the good news from the glorious and blessed God. Family, Jesus alone can move us from death to life. All the sins mentioned in 1 Timothy 1 verse 9 to 11, Jesus died for. All you need to do is acknowledge your sin Repent of your sin, turn away from your sin, and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Psalm 85, verse 4 to 9 says, Passion Translation, So bring us back to loving you, God our Savior. Restore our hearts so that we will never again feel your anger rise against us. Will you forever hold a grudge? Will your anger endure for all time? Revive us again, O oh God. I know you will. Give us a fresh start. Amen. Who wants a fresh start, family? Hallelujah. Then all your people will taste your joy and gladness. Pour out even more of your love on us. Reveal more of your kindness and restore us back to you. Now listen carefully. Now we will listen carefully to you for your voice and wait to hear whatever you say. Let me hear your promise of peace, the message every one of your godly lovers longs to hear. Don't let us, in our ignorance, turn back from following you. For I know your power and presence shine in all your devoted lovers. Your glory always hovers over all who bow low before you. Psalm 80 verse 19, New International Version. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. 2, Corinth, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. Listen to this family. This is God speaking. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Family, the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him this, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then only family, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Family, God reminds Solomon also, he says, if 
He reminds him about an agreement he made. If Israel obeys, they will be blessed. But if they disobey, they will be judged. And you can go and read that blessings and judgment in Deuteronomy 28. Christians are the people who are called by God's name. If Christians will humble themselves, pray, see God's face, and repent, then God will heal our land and heal your land around your family and friends' family. Can you say this? Father, I humble myself before you. Help me to pray. Help me to seek your face. Daily. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Family, now that you have been restored, remember we all was that rusty old car, no? Then God came in. He changed all the panels. And now we just look like the day we were manufactured. But you know, most Christians are, we are there to stand out and not to blend in. Do you all remember that, that TV show, Pump My Ride? Or um, Rusty Cars? Where people take a ordinary car that looks, that looks ordinary and they make it extraordinary. So that is how we are supposed to be. So let God pump our ride. Let's pump our rides, family. Hallelujah. This is how you add value to Christianity. This is how you pump your rides. You make an appointment with God every day. That adds value. That new mags. Go to church. That adds value to your life, family. One of the easiest ways to revive your Christian life is to start attending church again. Your spirit will be lifted and you will feel more connected to the one that created you. It would also do your heart and soul good to be around your brothers and sisters in church. Get involved in church. Choose a passion in church and get involved. Won't, scripture, Psalm 85 or 6, won't you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you? Family, the other one is to pump your ride is to join Bible college or join a Bible study group. Ask around and find a Bible study group. Join a Christian group. This means groups on Wednesdays that we started now, this groups, a women's group, a men's group, a singles group, a, wind, a widow's group, a sports group, thank you Clive, soccer group. This is another way to develop friendship with people who are like-minded. And then, to add value to your Christianity is pray for big and small things. Take time, to, take time out of your busy day. Go to a place quiet and comfortable and just talk to God. Pray about the small things that are bothering you and also about the big things. Psalm 119 verse 25. I lay in the dust. Revive me by your word. Join prayer nights, family. This also can give you a much similar turbo boost than your pump my right. Join prayer nights. Seek, <laughs> seeking to have a better prayer life. Or how to pray is, bet, is better than always. Well, let me repeat that. Seeking to have a better prayer life or how to pray better is always a good thing. Did you get that? Let me just do it again so I can get it. <laughs> Seeking to have a better prayer life or how to pray better is always a good thing. Yo, our people in Christian family church, we can bet now, we can pray. Let, now, this is another one. The new sound system that you've put in your vehicle now. Let your favorite praise and worship music, let the world know that you're a Christian. Put your favorite song on, 
and dance to it. Take a drive through town and let the, the music blare. Sing on the top of your lungs. This is a sure way to light up your life and your soul with positivity. Psalm 119 verse 50. Your promise revives me. It comforts me in all my troubles. Do you feel better after praise and worship? What troubles are you talking about? Amen. <laughs> now that you've added some more color, you've lowered your suspension, you've changed your mags, you've upgraded the sound system. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you are not blending in, you are standing out. So you have put in value to your Christianity. So in closing, family, God will only restore and turn to us if we humble ourselves and pray and seek His face and turn from our wicked ways. Then the Lord will hear from heaven and will forgive us our sins and heal our land. Yes, God's promise out of, his, out of the word. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. Remember, family, you need to be revived so that the new can be birthed. Let's all just raise our hands. You on Facebook? I see. Raise your hands. I say. And let's just thank God for restoration. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for restoration that's taking place right now, Lord. Thank you for your revelation on the word. Thank you, Lord, for faith that's rising up big in all of us, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and praise. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll consume everyone watching, everyone that's here in church, Lord. Let you consume them by your Holy Ghost fire. Rewire them, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Put that new coat of paint, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name. Lord, we thank you that you've removed everything out of us that's not of you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for all our new parts, Lord. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. Lord, thank you for revelation on your word. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Holy Spirit, we pray that you fall upon us right now. Restore us. Amen and amen. Yo. So family, <coughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yo. <coughs> so every time you see an old car, you must remember, humble yourself, pray and see God's face, turn away from your sins so God can hear your prayers. Amen and hallelujah. Let's give God all the glory, honor, and praise for this word today. Amen and amen. So yes, the most important part of the service, salvation. Family, we've all heard this message today. And we all were that rusty old car someday, one day. All of us, some of us feel like that rusty old car still. But today we just want to thank the Lord and want to give our hearts to the Lord and just thank Him for restoring us and taking us out of that situation, blowing up our tires and restoring us, giving us a new coat. Family, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to do that, and you want to make that decision today, I would like you to raise your hand in church today. Those on Facebook, you can just write your name there. 
And those of you who want to rededicate your life, those of you that know you've been stagnant, you've been sitting around doing nothing, you have collected some dust, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, please raise your hand. You on Facebook, just put your name in the comments. And those of you that just want to make sure, if you had to die today, that you will go to heaven, please raise your hand. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I recognize that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, come and live in my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God who came in the flesh and died on a cruel cross for my sins. Went to hell for three days in my place and God rose him from the dead and he's now seated on the right hand of God pleading my case for all eternity. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I am born again, a child of God, heaven bound. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God all the glory, honor, and praise for, all, for everyone that was dedicated, for every new renewed, and every new believer. Family, now we go into blessing time, the tithes and the offering. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise. The tithing message this morning is, the only way to open the windows of heaven is by tithing. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Family, are you in for that blessing? Pour out a blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. Let's say this, family. God's anointing. To prosper me, rest upon me. God's presence, rest upon me. God's favor, God's grace, God's mercy, rest upon me. God has given me power to become rich. The windows of heaven are open above my life. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. If you have chosen family to take God at His word this morning, and you want to take part in this kingdom principle by giving into the gospel, then I want you to make this bold confession in faith over your seed. Say this with me. The Lord takes pleasure in my prosperity. God's favor and God's grace is upon my life. He has anointed me to prosper with promotion and financial increase. I believe God's word is true. His blessings and favor is upon me. And I promise to always remember, it is the Lord, my God, that causes me.
to prosper socially, physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. Hallelujah. Let's give God all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, family. Let your giving penetrate the heavens and bring breakthrough into your life this morning. As you prepare your offering as an act of faith, please make use of the envelope on your seat, family. God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. Just, let's just raise our hands for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I release a blessing of health, wealth, provision, protection, promotion, increase, acceleration, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Goodbye, family.